one of the best things about being able to grow your own food is no matter what time of year it is, you can always go to your garden or allotment and harvest something delicious. And today I thought, hey, I fancy some kale chips and it's always satisfying no matter how long you've been doing it for to go and harvest your own homegrown produce. And even if you haven't started growing your own food, you don't need a garden. All you need is a raised bed. So I thought in today's video, I'd outline seven really simple steps to making your first raised bed a huge success. If you haven't yet built a raised bed, then there are two videos which should be popping up now, showing you two different designs. And the first one is this one, which I made for, for free, and it's made out of a pallet. Or there's this one, which is actually made out of 100% recycled plastic from British Recycled Plastic. So they're two very different ends of the spectrum. This is about four by four foot, but this is 10 by four foot. So the first thing you need to do, step one, is about filling the raised bed. Now, ideally, you want to aim for kind of the bottom half, the bottom 50% to be soil, and then the top 50% to be compost. And the compost should be multi-purpose and peat-free, for example, what I'm using now. But if your budget is low or you're trying to save money, then you can get away with just putting a layer of compost over the top. So if you have a minimum of at least five centimeters of compost as a layer over the top, then that's a good target to have. But the more the merrier, and you don't need to worry about mixing this in either, because what's gonna happen is we're trying to approach the snow dig. So all of the worms and microorganisms will gradually take the nutrients down to the roots but most vegetables they actually have quite shallow roots so depth isn't as important when it comes to the nutrients and then I'm just going to use my hand or you can use a rake to just spread it out nicely and now I'm getting a nice depth of compost ready for step two I'm just tapping down gently with the rake just to make it nice and level ready for sowing seeds straight away surprisingly i think step two might be the hardest step of them all because that's choosing out of all the vegetables what you want to grow in your raised bed and for example if you don't have much time i'd stick to three to four main vegetable crops to grow throughout the year. Now if you do have some time and you want to really learn as much as possible, then my new book Veg in One Bed shows you how you can grow nearly 20 different vegetables in a raised bed throughout the year with harvest every single month of the year in this 10 by 4 foot raised bed. So do check that out if you are interested. Step three is to make a planting plan and to stick to it because the thing about vegetables is that a lot of them need to be sown at different times of the year, otherwise they're not going to mature properly. For example, if you sow leeks and it's July or August, then they're not ever going to develop well enough. So what you can do is to quite simply make a, an overhead plan month by month of your raised bed, and you can just write down everything that needs to happen each month so you can have a really easy overview, which you can stick on your wall, and then you can always make sure that you are on track. The fourth step is to understand and know when to water. So for example, if you've just sown a load of seeds, it's really important to water them in. Like that. And especially for smaller seeds like lettuce or carrots or radish like I've grown here, you don't actually want these to dry out when they're trying to germinate up until they're about five centimetres. And there's a permaculturist called Bill Mollison and he uses this really clever technique where he gets a board and you'll place it over where you've sown your seeds. And what this does is that it helps retain the evaporation and every day or so just check 
and see if there's anything growing underneath and as soon as you see little seedlings emerge then take this away and then keep this watered up until they're about five centimeters in height. Once seedlings are about five centimeters tall, then water these once the top five centimeters of soil is dry or once every other day during dry warm weather. And as seedlings mature, they become far more resilient against drought because they have a stronger root system. And the bigger the plant, the more water that they will need. For a smaller raised bed, I would recommend two full watering cans for each watering session and also never water wet soil. Step five is to always keep on top of the weeds and the easiest way of doing this is whenever you go and tend your plants or water just keep an eye out for weeds because they can quite easily without weeding get a bit out of hand like this one and the bigger the weeds the harder they are to pull out. A weed is anything that grows where you haven't actually planted something on purpose or something which looks completely different to everything else which is growing nearby. And the great thing about a raised bed is that it's actually quite a small area. So keeping on top of weeds should be a breeze. Step six is to always keep your eye out as well for pests and diseases and even if you're really new you'll soon get to understand and see the signals for this so anything that just looks out of place. Now for example if you have loads of pots and trays around or long grass near your raised bed then remove this because these are perfect habitats for slugs. What you can do is either make a slug pub or you can even go out at night if you've seen some damage and take a torch in a bucket and on a warm humid night it's perfect to go along and pick up any slugs that you find because that is when they're most active. Another common pest that you get in gardens are birds and things like sparrows they like to go for your charred leaves which is really weird and pigeons really like brassicas so by putting a stick and a plant pot over the top and doing this in all of the corners then you're going to protect your plants from those but just make sure if you see something, it's so easy to just go on Google and have a search and it'll come up with loads of different ideas for how to deal with pests and diseases. Or you can also find the most common ones in my book as well. And step seven is to just enjoy your harvest. So for example, this kale has been battered by some really heavy frosts, but it's still producing abundantly and hopefully the first batch of kale chips are going to be ready. It's just always such an amazing feeling to eat your own homegrown veg. And hopefully this video has shown you how simple it is to outline those seven steps and apply those in your own raised bed. And before you know it, you'll be growing loads of your own food. And don't forget about my book, Veg in One Bed, which is just dedicated to maximizing your growing potential from a single raised bed. The most important thing is to not dwell in your failures. Just use those as a learning curve but to always focus on the successes because even gardeners who have been growing all of their lives can experience failures. It's just part of it. But the most important thing is to enjoy the things which do grow really well, as am I doing right now. Make sure you get the book because the book is a stepping stone between growing a few things in some containers and pots to having a fully sized allotment or back garden. It gives you all of the skills that you need to make that transition onto larger scale growing. And finally, if you're free at 3 p.m. UK time this Sunday, Sunday the 10th of March, then join me for my first ever live stream on this channel and we can do a load of Q&As and hopefully it'll be good fun. So hopefully I'll see you there. Mm. So good. I suppose I should share these. Are you still here, are you? <laughs>